Hello and welcome to the Camp Flintlock YouTube channel. My name is Adam. I am the assistant director here at Camp Flintlock. And in this video and in the following videos on this playlist, we will be discussing this topic of day camp. If you are looking for something to do with your kid this summer, or if you've already signed up and you just want to refresh over some of the information, then this playlist is for you. Our first video is going to be long form. It will have all of the parts to it. You can also skip around with the chapter um, tabs as well. If you're an organization which is looking to expand your summertime programming, perhaps through a junior ranger program or something similar, please reach out to us on our email. And that's campflintlockinc inc at gmail.com. So let's get into it. First things first, we need to take a look at the dates and we need to take a look at how to sign up and how to pay. So let's look at our website. Here we are, campflutlock.com. There's a couple of ways that you can navigate to the summer camp page. You can come down here, the very first block of text, we have our summer camp link right here. So you can click on that, that'll take you directly to our summer camp page, or you can come up here to programs, and then come down here. This has all of our programs that we do. So special events, our colonial fair, all the camps, the overnight campouts that we offer, and then field trips as well. So you can come click on that. That'll bring you down the page. We have basically a summation of everything here. But this is not the end all be all. So if you come down, there's a little button, learn more and register. That's the page you wanna to come to. And that is our summer camp page. If you don't see your particular session listed up here on one of these buttons, don't freak out. We only have space for two buttons in this header. For whatever reason, we can't add any more buttons. So if you don't see your session up here, don't freak out. Just keep scrolling. So here we have the dates for the day camp, our family camp out, boys and girls. And these are overnight. So the day camp... We can click on that. That'll bring us down the page. Day camp's about three quarters of the way down. So our day camp, just like our overnight camps, are focused on the day-to-day -day life of colonial America. Your campers will do hands-on activities as well as age-appropriate crafts and chores, such as playing games, singing songs, doing skits, and making a variety of crafts like dolls or necklaces candles, that sort of thing. This year, being 2024, we are having two sessions of day camp. The first will be in downtown Raleigh at the Joel Lane Museum House. Among all of the fun things we will be doing there at the Joel Lane Museum will be not only our own hands-on activities and crafts, but we will also be touring the Joel Lane House. And for those of you that have not been there, it is in downtown Raleigh. We will have another section here that will discuss where exactly in Raleigh it is. But uh, it's a very interesting place to visit. They have open houses twice a year that we participate in. One for July 4th and then one for Christmas. Uh, the Christmas one is usually the first Saturday of December. And I think July 4th is... I'm pretty sure it's always on July 4th. So, we will be talking a little bit about the father of Wake County. And uh, he is a very interesting guy, to say the least. So, uh, that's Joel Lane. Our other session is going to be at our facility in Four Oaks. And again, we'll talk a bit more about where it, that is. But uh, we're just about 10 minutes off of Interstate 40 at exit 319. Geographically speaking, 
we're about dead center between Smithfield and Four Oaks. So not quite McGee's Crossroads, but in that kind of general area. So what's it going to cost? Well, $265. That is for Monday through Friday. We provide clothes. We do provide one meal. We provide snacks. And part of that is even refundable. We have a $25 security deposit that will be refunded to you uh, at the end of camp. And when I say the end of camp, I mean the end of all of camp. Normally we do it uh, near the end of July. So within the last couple weeks of July is when you should see your refund come. And it will arrive in the order or in the way that you paid it. So if you paid it online through Shopify, our store, it'll come to you through there. If you paid through PayPal, it'll come to you through there. If you mailed in a check, then you'll receive a check in the mail. And we'll let you know uh, that we have mailed it. But don't look for it until like the last week of July. So what does the security deposit cover? Well, that is just in case uh, if your camper does something silly and decides to, you know, pull up a tent stake or rip a tent or uh, light something on fire, which is not something that we've had happen, but it's just for damage or wear. So basically, they're going to be issued a cup. Uh, it'll be a tin cup. If their cup goes missing for whatever reason, maybe you just decided you wanted to keep it, it's $8. Um, the clothing in the haversacks, if it is torn or ripped, a haversack is just a bag that they can put their stuff in, uh, that's two fifty. If the bag itself goes missing, if you decide, you know, this is a pretty cool bag, I want to keep it, uh, it is going to be $15. And then the cord making jig, which uh, we'll talk a little bit more about in the activity section, uh, the activity, the cord making jigs are $2. So... The $25 goes toward that should it go missing, should it get broken. Uh, some of it, you know, we'll let it slide. You know, occasionally you drop a cup and it starts leaking or, you know, you might drop the cup and the, the handle comes loose. That sort of thing we're not really worried so much about. Um, it's, it's more for like, you know, let's say that we had the cup, it's at the house, and now we don't know where it's at, or maybe they sat on it, uh, or, you know, they've otherwise destroyed it in some way. So that's what that is for. As far as registering, we have this link right here. You can click register for day camp. That'll take you to our handy dandy Google form, and you can fill out everything here. Uh, this is our Gmail. This is... Uh, our private texting line. So if you need to text us, uh, do that. Texting is one of the easiest ways to get a hold of us uh, because we don't always have people in the office. We don't always have someone there to answer the phone or even to check the messages at times. So things, if you call us and you leave a message, I cannot guarantee that we will get back to you in a timely manner. So please, use the texting line. So here we have our two sessions and depending on how much overflow we have from the residential camp, uh, we may raise the age. So right now, the youngest is Someone who has completed the first grade, but has not completed the seventh grade. So if, for whatever reason, if we have a lot of overflow from the overnight campouts, then we might raise that um, just so that those people, if they would like to, can come over to day camp. And it's just pretty basic information, the name, birthday, uh, and various other things, uh, primary care provider, tetanus shots, the sizing for their clothes, because we will be issuing them some clothing. So that is the registration and how we go about registering our campers. 
If you have any questions about the registration process, do get a hold of us. Once you have submitted your form, we will reach back out to you. We'll say, hey, you know, we've received your form. Now here's what we need. You can pay X, Y, Z. And speaking of which, let's take a look back at our payment options. So back here at the Camp Flintlock website, we'll scroll all the way up here to the top. You can come to the store and then we'll just search summer. And here we have our various items for summer camp. So if you come to the day camp registration fee, you'll notice it says from $130. And the reason for that is because you can select what you want to pay. You can either do the entire amount, which is the $265. You can do the deposit, which is the 130, which the what the deposit does is it essentially reserves your camper's spot. Or you can err rather, and you can come back later and pay the remainder $135. So it's up to you if you want to do the whole fee in one go or if you want to do half and half. If you have multiple parents. Uh, it's kind of a split family situation, and you want to split it right down the middle and not do the 265. Um, I want to say off the top of my head, it cuts 132.50. So if you want to do something like that, that's fine. I would suggest either uh, calling us or you can text us to set up a, an appointment to call so that we can take payment over the phone because we can take credit cards like that. Uh, so we can customize your your amount, okay? So that is how we sign up for camp. That's how we pay for camp. And yeah, our next segment, we're going to be talking about uh, what your camper needs to bring. So what do we need to bring to camp? Well, for day camp, there's not really a lot that you have to bring. There's a few required things. Uh, number one are comfortable shoes. We are gonna be on our feet a large portion of the day. So comfortable shoes are a must. We do not recommend going out and buying a new pair of shoes simply because new shoes, which are not worn in, will cause blisters and they'll be uncomfortable. Also, I know it's kind of a pain sometimes because it look you know you, you buy your kid clothing and then like three months later they've outgrown it. But properly pit, fitting shoes can make a world of difference. They do need to be worn in, but they don't need to be falling apart. So shoes are a must. Good shoes. Preferably something that are closed toed and then Recommended items, we would recommend that they bring a water bottle if they would so choose, something preferably with their name on it. They will need to bring a lunch. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, they will need to bring their own lunch. Friday, we will be providing a lunch for them, but the other four days, they will need to bring something. So whatever they bring their stuff in, if it's a lunch box, if it's a bag, whatever it might be, it needs to have their name on it, along with whatever eatery, you know, utensils or whatever they bring. That way we can say, oh, this belongs to her, here you go, or this belongs to him, here you go, because stuff gets left behind. And uh, I don't know about you, but most people probably only have maybe one or two lunch boxes, and if you leave both of them at camp, you won't have anything to put it in the next day. So make sure to put it their name on everything. Sunscreen is something which is recommended. It's not required. We will have sunscreen for use and then bug spray. We will have some bug spray, but if they want to bring some, that is fine. We do not recommend um, aerosol. So if you can 
press and hold and it keeps it continue gives a continuous stream we don't recommend that mainly because um we will have a fire occasionally you know for cooking and then also for when we do candle making and uh aerosols tend to be turned into flamethrowers and we don't want that to happen so uh, bug spray squirty kind that you know it's not a continuous spray that's that's fine and then as far as clothing goes we will provide clothing and i actually have a couple pieces here so for the boys they're going to get a shirt like this does it have any buttons on the collar or anything it's just kind of an open v-neck shirt cotton and then they will get what we call a waistcoat. Now, in modern times, we would call this a vest, but back then they called it a waistcoat. So, uh, this is a waistcoat. Unfortunately, the uh, the pockets are fake. That would drive me crazy, but it's just for show. Um, the colors of the waistcoat are kind of dependent upon the size. Most of them are probably going to be either brown, uh, black. We might have some blue or some red, but you basically, the color you get what you get. Um, there might be some wiggle room depending on how much, how many campers we have and what we have available. So the boys will get a shirt and a waistcoat or vest. And then the ladies, their clothing is a bit more involved. Uh, they will get this right here. This is called the shift. And it has a drawstring neck, um, and it's quite long. It's supposed to come to just about the ankles. So they would put this on first, and then over top of that, they're going to get what we call a petticoat. You guys, modern times, we call it a skirt. Um, so this is a petticoat. Now, funny thing about petticoats, the word petty comes from the French word petite, but they're not very petite. Uh, they're not very small, right? Um, they have a drawstring. And what we suggest is when they put it on, you cinch it down, um, and you want it, then you tie it. Now you want to tie it not front, not with a side that has a knot in it, because that'll just get in the way. But you cinch it down on one side, and then I just tie it how I do my shoes, bunny ears, like that. So the one thing that trips people up is they can't tighten it. If for whatever reason it won't tighten, tie it again. Uh, if I pull on this side, that's not doing anything. That's just making this shorter. So to tighten it, I want to tie, I want to pull this side. That will tighten it up. And again, if it doesn't tighten, retie it. You probably did something backwards. So, I don't know how well show up on camera, but make a loop and come around. I've got my thumb in there. And I just tuck that through where my thumb was. And there we go. And then I can pull this, and that tightens. Okay? And then when it's ready to come off, you just pull it, and it comes right undone. So there's the shift, and then the petticoat, uh, and then lastly, we have what is today called an apron. Back then, they called it a pinafore, and the reason for that is because these strings that went around the neck, they weren't there. So they would originally have pinned these on if you have a lady who wants to pin them on. Safety pins are fine. They just pin right on to the shift. Um, if it is a female camper and they are um, wanting something to cover their torso, we can offer basically a bodice, which is kind of like a vest, but for ladies, and it's laced up the front instead of buttoned. So if they want something like that, we can provide them a bodice. Um, they're gonna get two sets of those. So the boys are each gonna get two shirts, two waistcoats, the ladies are going to get two shifts, two petticoats, and they're going to get one pinafore. If the pinafores get 
dirty or messed up, that's fine. That's what they're there for. So they'll get them when they check in, and then you'll keep them the whole week. So uh, when they get there, we get everybody processed, we get them dressed out. You will be given a second set of clothing to take with you, and then those can stay at home. They basically, they'll have one to wear, and they'll have one to wash. And then they can, you know, swap them out. As far as what you wear underneath these clothing, uh, if, a, if a boy wants to wear an undershirt, that's fine. You're going to be hot. If a girl wants to wear an undershirt, or if they want to wear shorts underneath their petticoat, that's fine. They're going to be hot. But, you know, it's up to them. For... Girls, we do recommend knee-length socks, and, you know, athletic shorts underneath are fine. So, beyond the clothing that they will wear pretty much the whole time, we will also be issuing bandanas. And bandanas will be, we got, have either two or three colors. I know we've got blue we have green, we might have red, but people, everyone will be issued some sort of a bandana. We'll put their name on it. Most people will have it lost it by the end of the week, uh, but the bandana is theirs. They get to keep it. The other clothing we will need back, and uh, we will send a reminder out, usually via email or text, to remind say, hey, it's Friday. When you come check them out, make sure to bring the clothes. That is what you need to bring. So a lunch for Monday through Thursday. A water bottle is recommended but not required. Bug spray and um, sunscreen, which are not in aerosol form. And comfortable shoes. If you have any questions about that, just reach out to us. Uh, we will be more than happy to fill in any blanks, answer any questions. Please know you don't have to go out and purchase historical clothing because it's rather expensive. Uh, as far as pants go for the guys, if they can wear pants, they can wear shorts. It doesn't really matter so much. Um, something that's going to keep them cool. That I, w I would recommend that. So. That is all for the what to bring. Next, we're going to be talking about the check-in and check-out procedures. In this section, we will be discussing the check-in and check-out procedures for day camp. So here we have, at the top, our two locations. For this year, the 2024, we have the Joel Lane Museum House located at 160 St. Mary Street in Raleigh. And then our second session will be the Four Oaks Johnston County Day Camp, which will be at our location, 218 Hickory Grove Church Road in Four Oaks. Check in and check out is going to be starting at 8.30 a.m. and running till 9 a.m. So that is check-in. You can check in your camper as early as 8.30. We do not start the day until 9.15. So if you're running a little behind, that's fine. We won't start until about 9.15. But you can drop them off as early as 8.30. If, for whatever reason, you need to drop them off earlier due to, you know, scheduling or whatever, what have you, um, just let us know. That's fine. We can get there earlier. And then checkout is going to be at 3 o'clock. So the day is done at 3. If you want to come a little earlier than 3, a little bit later than 3, that's fine. But uh, all of our scheduled activities end at 3 o'clock. So from around 3 to 3.15 is checkout. Again, if you're running late, just let us know. We will stay with your camper. We will keep them entertained. We might even put them to work. Um, one thing that is for definite sure, though, at 3 o'clock, they are going to be tuckered out. In fact, one thing that is just about consistent from year to year, camper to camper, is that by the time they're in the car, they're seated, they're buckled up and quiet, they're probably asleep. 
So uh, if you need to contact us, remember, just shoot us a text to our texting line there. Most of this arrival stuff is for Monday. First of all, when you get there, you will be received in the order that you arrive. So, you know, if you're the fifth person to show up, then you're the fifth in line. Uh, Monday, it kind of matters more than any other day simply because we need to do the following things. First of all, you'll need to sign in your camper. So that'll be camper's name, your name, in print. That way we know who is the person that dropped this camper off. A lot of people will sign. We will ask you please to print your name because odds are we may not be able to read your signature. We will double check everything on the registration form, so any and all instructions, such as uh, whether we can post stuff to Facebook, whether we can take pictures, whether we can do, uh, whether we can sell your camper uh, bladed tools, such as knives and tomahawks, if they need any medications or if they have dietary restrictions. Remember, as far as the dietary restriction goes, we do have meals, or rather not meals, excuse me, we do have snack. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we will be doing snack as well as a lunch. So we will be cooking their food on Friday. Uh, Facebook. You can go to our Facebook page, Camp Luntlock. We get a ton of stuff there. We post there fairly regular. And we will only post stuff, pictures and whatnot, if it is permitted. Beyond our public Facebook page, we will be hosting private Groups. Each session of summer camp will have its own group. So the Joe Lane House Day Camp will have a private Facebook group where we will upload pictures, uh, upload videos, we will post um, reminders or updates or you know whatever communication um, that might be. Hey, it's Friday. Make sure to bring the clothing for checkouts or it's Friday or tomorrow, you know, tomorrow's Friday and we will pro be providing a lunch so they don't have to bring one, stuff like that. But we do use Facebook quite a bit um, for photos as well as for updates. And again, we have a public page, but then all of the other stuff is going to be posted to the private group and you will receive a link so you can join that private group. Or you can go to our website and find it through the groups. Uh, once we have double-checked everything, then you are free to go. Um, let me back up just one step here, though. Blades. So we do have a store that we sell stuff. We do sell knives. We do tell, sell tomahawks as well as mouse hawks. Mouse hawks are just smaller tomahawks. And permissions for that is given on the registration form. So if we can sell them a blade, then it will be checked yes. If we can't, then it will be checked no. If we can sell them one, but they're not allowed to have it, we will hold on to it and give it to you or whoever is there to pick them up when they're picked up. But that's how the blades work. The store, we will have the store open on Tuesday afternoon as well as Thursday afternoon. So Tuesday and Thursday, we will have the store open. You can do shopping. I would suggest going onto our website and then checking out our online store. We'll have, I would say, virtually everything that's on the online store will also be on our in our physical store when you come to pick them up Tuesday and Thursday. But check out the website. That way you can create a plan, you can create a budget, and you can figure out how much money you want to spend. Most of the stuff that we have is not terribly expensive. Uh, it's decent quality. You know, it's historic site kind of stuff. Um, but it's always better to know what something costs so that way you can see, like, oh, you know, get your sister, or get your brother, or get your cousin something, you know. Um, and all that is on our website. checking campers out, so departures. First of all, campers will only be allowed to leave with people who are approved to pick them up. Pickup approval 
is on the registration form that you filled out. So if they're not on that list, your camper cannot go with them. If they show up and it's like, hey, I'm aunt or uncle so-and-so, that's my nephew or niece, um, we'll contact you just to make sure because they're not allowed to go with anyone that's not on the list without prior approval. Whoever it is that's going to pick them up is going to have to sign for them. And not so much with a signature, but just with their name. Similar to how we do the check-in, check-out's the same. They'll put the camper name and then their name in print. We will recommend that parents look through their camper's things to make sure they have all of their stuff. It might be their water bottle. It might be their lunchbox. It might be the hat or, you know, whatever. Um, it's difficult to pack a lunchbox if you've left your lunchbox the day before. So we want to make sure they have everything. And at the end of the day, we will make a sweep. So anything that's left, we will hold on to. And then on Friday, we will recommend that all the parents go through the lost and found because we will have a lost and found more than likely with a few things in it. So we want to make sure that all your stuff gets returned to you. Your security deposits will be issued in the form that you paid them. So if you paid through PayPal, if you paid through Shopify, you're going to get your refund that way. For day camp, the security refund is $25. If you paid via check, then you'll get another check back. The store, again, which will be open Tuesday and Thursday, will remain open so long as we have parents there to shop. You're more than welcome to hang around, look out, uh, look through our stuff. It's, it's really up to you. When you are ready to leave, you're more than welcome to. And then, again, staff will remain with the campers until they are picked up. We're not going to leave someone sitting on the curb waiting for a ride and we'll keep them entertained and we might even put them to work. So we'll stay with them. If you are running late, again, please do let us know. That is our texting line. And it's no big deal. You know, we'll, we'll stay there with them. It's, you know, it is what it is. If you're running late, you're running late. So let's take a look at where these places are. So we have Jolie Museum House. So here's Raleigh. Here's I-40. So we're down here in this area. So let's look. Zoom in here. So we are basically right in the heart of downtown. So we got West Hargett Street there. And then we have West Morgan. So St. Mary Street is here. Joel Lane is on the corner of West Hargett and St. Mary's. There's usually parking in this area here. Sometimes you can park on this side of the street, but there are parking spaces on this side of the street. During the day, we will march down to Nash Square. So if... Uh, right before lunch, if you need to come get your camper, uh, they will not be here. They are going to be down the road. At Nash Square. So here is Nash Square. Joe Lane House. So it's a couple blocks down the road. We'll be coming to Nash Square to do our... Um, games and our recreation because there's really not enough room at the Joel Lane house to do it. So if you're going to be picking your kid up just before lunch, then you might be doing it down here at the Joel Lane house. Or not at the Joel Lane house, but at Nash Square. So that is that session. And then Camp Flintlock. We're here. So Raleigh is up here. That's the Joel Lane house. So you got Four Oaks, 
Smithfield, McGee's Crossroads, right there in the middle of that. So there's Highway 210, there's, high, there's Interstate 40. We're about 10 minutes off of Interstate 40. We do have two locations. We have this location, which is our summer camp, and then we also have this location. 1580 King Mill Road is our office. If you are coming to the uh, the day camp at Camp Footlock in Four Oaks, do not come to 1580 King Mill Road. That is our office. There will not be anybody there. Come to 218 Hickory, Gro Hickory Grove Church Road. So, let's take a little bit of a closer look. So there's the neighborhood that's just across. So this is Hickory Grove Church Road. This is King Mill Road. And as you can see, there's a whole lot of nothing. But this is Camp Flintlock right here. Now, it's a little bit deceiving because it just looks like a giant open field. Behind those trees, that's where the camp is. So, come a little bit further down here. This is our entrance. We'll have flags. We'll have a sign hanging up here. You just come in, come down the road, and then we'll park down here in the field. Okay? So that is Camp Flintlock. That's how you find us. And that's where we're going to be parking over here in this field. I would show you a satellite view, but it's just trees. Like you can't really you can't really see anything from from up there. You kind of have to be on the ground but now well, you can see a little bit this is our games area this is where we put most of our tents for the overnight camp this is probably our kitchen um, but yeah it's this wooded area that is our summer camp so that's the check-in check-out how you find us if you have any questions about that feel free to reach out remember you can text us email and uh, we will get back to you. So, up next, we have our behavioral expectations. In this section, we're going to be covering our behavioral expectations and our discipline policy. So, it's pretty simple. First of all, we want to make sure that our campers are following instructions and that they're not causing uh, undue risk and that they're not, you know, tearing stuff up. We can't have everyone running around doing whatever they want. We do expect that the campers will listen to our staff and that they will follow instructions. If, for whatever reason, they are not capable of doing that, then we will have to go into our discipline policy. We've never really had to do that. Pretty much everyone who's come to camp have, they've wanted to be there. And aside from, you know, some of them being a bit more tired, by the end of the day, almost all the kids we've had have been really great. So um, what we're going to do, the discipline policy is, uh, first of all, if we ask them to do something or stop doing something, then we're going to redirect them. We're going to say, hey, why don't you stop doing that? Come do this over here. Or if they're doing something that's unsafe, you know, hey, don't sit by the fire. Go sit over here. Don't play with sharp objects. This is how you, you know, do whatever you're doing. All right, so we will redirect them. If, after being redirected, the camper continues to misbehave, then they will be sat in timeout. So whatever activity we're doing, 
they're going to be removed from that. They're going to be set um, off to the side. They will have someone watching over them. But they're not going to just be, you know, sequestered to a part of the camp area that we can't see. But they will be given timeout, and then the parent or guardian will be notified, probably through a text. If, at this point, the camper continues to misbehave, and sometimes there might be stuff going on at home that will manifest itself at camp, sometimes the camper just doesn't want to be there, which doesn't happen very often, but occasionally it does, um, then we will have a conference with the staff, uh, either the director or assistant director, with the camper, and also with the parents. So we will be relaying with you. And more than likely, we'll, depending on what time of day it is, you know, we might have you on the phone, or if it's not really anything that's big, but it's something that needs to be addressed, you know, we can wait till the end of the day when someone comes to pick them up. Uh, but we'll have a talk with them. And then uh, after that, if, you know, we've talked to them, we've, we've had a timeout, we've had, you know, a talk between you, the parent, us, and the camper, and then we still haven't resolved the issue, then we might have to dismiss your camper. So if that happens, we'll need you to come pick them up. Um, we've never had that happen. We've had some campers uh, make some poor choices, some poor judgment calls, but we've never had to dismiss a camper from the day camp. Uh, but if they refuse to follow instructions, if they are disruptive, if they're unsafe, or if they are um, damaging private property, then, you know, they might have to be dismissed. So actions which will um, result in immediate dismissal include but are not limited to any action that could threaten or pose a direct threat to the physical or emotional safety of another camper or our staff, fighting, vandalism of our property or of the property of our host site, so in this case, the Joel Lane Museum House, any kind of sexual misconduct, possession or use of uh, alcohol, tobacco, drugs, or any other controlled substances which are not prescribed by a doctor or even abuse of those, and then biting. Um, so, you know, we don't expect people to put their mouths on each other. We don't expect for people to put their hands on each other. There's a time and place for hugging. There's a time and place, uh, to hold hands and in situations which are outside of that context, we expect people to keep their hands to themselves. We expect them to play nice. We expect them to communicate. And even if, you know, maybe they're not that good at communicating yet. It's an age thing, um, but that's all kind of the process of camp is growing as a person and trying to overcome those things. Uh, we will keep an eye on campers, so if someone seems to be uh, being ostracized by other people or if they're being picked on by other people, uh, we will intervene. There is a possibility that stuff might happen that our staff simply doesn't see. If your camper doesn't bring it to our attention and we haven't caught it because whoever's doing it is sneaky or they know when and where to do it, then we won't we won't know about it. But if you can bring it to our attention, if the camper brings it to our attention, then we can do something about it. Obviously, we want to make sure that camp is a safe and fun experience for everybody. And we will do our best to make sure that that does happen. So, that is um, what we expect behaviorally. That is our discipline policy. If you have any questions about that, you can contact us. Again, all the kids that we've had come to our day camp have been wonderful. As far as I can know, no one's ever, ever really gotten hurt at camp. We might have, may have had some people with splinters. We may have had some people with chafing or sore feet, but 
behaviorally, all the kids that we've had at camp have been um, very well behaved. So, again, just to recap, the first offense, they'll be redirected, put towards something else. Second offense, they will be put in timeout. Third offense, we will uh, conference between the camper, our staff, either a director or assistant director, and the parent or guardian. And if that persists and there is no uh, catharsis for it, then the camper may have to be dismissed. So, up next we have food and what we will be eating. In this section, we're going to talk a little bit about the food that we will serve as snacks during day camp as well as Friday's meal. So the days are themed. We have Town Life Tuesday, Wigwam Wednesday, Tactical Thursday, and Florin Friday. So Tuesday, we're going to go over tan town things. Wednesday is going to be Native American. Thursday is military, and then Friday we are going to, to discuss a bit about um, African American culture. So the snacks will kind of fit into that theme. So for instance, these are examples. It's not to say that these are the things that we will be eating, um, but just kind of as examples on Town Life Tuesday you know, we might do tea biscuits and some kind of a juice. For Wigwam Wednesday, we might do popcorn. We might do trail mix. Uh, and our trail mix is very good. Our trail mix consists of um, parched corn, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, and dried cranberries. It's really good. We usually don't have any left over. Tactical Thursdays um, really kind of depends on what we would do. Sometimes we've done um, country ham, which is kind of like ham, but it's a bit more salty. We try to boil off the salt, um, but we'll also, uh, we might have a drink like ale, ginger ale, or we might do root beer, right? Um, and then... There's, you know, Four Lone Friday. Uh, in the past, we have done hoe cake and molasses. Uh, it really kind of just depends. Sometimes we change it up from year to year. Um, our Monday snack might be anything of that. We might do ginger snaps. We might do tea biscuits. Uh, we might do trail mix. We might do pickles. Um... It's not going to be something big. It's just going to be, you know, something small to hold people over. Uh, if you have, if your camper has any kind of food allergies, obviously do put that, dietary restrictions, please do put that in the registration. And we'll double check with you to make sure that it is correct on the registration when you check them in. As far as the meal goes, we will cook something called Hop and John. So Friday's lunch will be provided. And Hop and John is a mix of rice, beans, and sausage. It's not spicy. We will add seasoning to it. And it's usually a pretty big hit. When we say Hop and John, a lot of times the kids will be like, Oh, Papa John's, we're having pizza, yay! And it's like, no. And then Friday comes and they're like, Where's the pizza? Uh, there is no pizza. It's not Papa John's, it's Hopping John. And it's a traditional English meal normally eaten around New Year's. Normally it would have black-eyed peas. And you might have heard people say, you know, you need to eat your black-eyed peas for luck around New Year's. Well, this is where you would eat it. You would mix it in with the rice and the sausage. We use black beans. Um, it's really simple meal. We take sausage, ground sausage, we brown it, 
take it out of the pot. We'll leave the grease, most of the grease in there. We'll throw in rice. We typically just use white rice. Throw rice in there, boil the rice, let it get done. Throw the sausage in, throw the beans in, put the seasoning, mix it all together, let it heat up, um, and then serve it. And more than likely, it'll be served with something to go along with it. So maybe uh, pickle spears, we might have rolls, we might have uh, hoop cheese. Most people haven't seen hoop cheese. Hoop cheese is, you know, it's a, it's a block of cheese. It's a circle. Um, and we do, we serve, sometimes we serve hoop cheese with it. Um, it really just kind of depends. And again, it will, it may change year to year, but our meal on Friday is pretty consistently hop and John. So if your camper is vegetarian or maybe if they're vegan, we will cook the separate portion for them. So it'll be set to the side. It won't have the the animal grease in it or it won't have the sausage in it. So we'll, we can accommodate that. But the food's really simple. Um, outside of that, we will be serve. We may be serving uh, lemonade, and that's regular yellow lemonade. We'll have water on hand the whole time. Um, for Town Life Tuesday, sometimes we do tea, and it's just basically the same kind of tea that you might get from, you know, a fast food place. Uh, we take a concentrate and mix it, so. Uh, it actually doesn't taste half bad. And then, again, for you know, the military day, we might be serving root beer. We might serve ginger ale. So it'll say beer. It'll say ale on the, uh, the menu for the day. And, um, yeah, that's, that's the food that we'll be serving. Um, so we'll serve a snack Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we will serve snack and a meal. So Friday, they don't have to bring a meal. And I think that's pretty much it. If you have any questions over the food, you know, just give us a shout. Um, we have had people in the past who need uh, gluten-free snacks. So, you know, we can accommodate most of the... Uh, dietary restrictions. So if you have any questions, you know, do reach out, let us know. Um, our texting line is the easiest way to get a hold of us. In this section, we're going to talk about activities. So the activities for day camp, they don't really change much year to year, and they typically follow a theme. So Monday, doesn't really have a theme. Tuesday is usually Town Life Tuesday. We have Wigwam Wednesday, which is Native American. Tactical Thursday being military. And then Falorin Friday being African American. So the activities that we do will kind of fit into those themes. For Monday, certain activities might include playing games such as Graces or Kick the Can. We will teach your campers how to braid rope and braiding rope is a very it's a very calming experience people tend to enjoy it um, and basically they take this octagonal piece of leather with a bundle of string and then they just move the string around as they turn the jig we will have skits uh, Monday will typically be a counselor skit we're going to be doing journal making, so everyone is going to be walking away with a journal, leather-bound journal, that is, uh, right from day one. We will have readings, and depending on the day, will depend on what the reading might be. Uh, let's see here. So some of the other activities for like Town Life Tuesday, we'll be doing candle making. We'll do uh, colonial dancing. We might make some cedar sachets. Uh, we'll write with a feather quill. It's always a very popular activity. We'll sing a song. That song is normally um, 
Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. We'll do some sort of a skit. And then for Wigwam Wednesday, we'll do the tomahawk throw. And most of the student, most of the campers will be able to do it. Not everybody's going to get it stuck in the target, but we will give everybody a chance, so long as we feel that it is safe. Some of the campers might be too small to do it, but most of them are going to have a chance to throw uh, a mouse hawk. Mouse hawks are smaller than tomahawks. Uh, let's see here. So... Normally we play a game called Double Ball, and Double Ball is a stick and ball game. It's kind of similar to lacrosse. We will make an authentic Native American style necklace out of real buffalo bone, buffalo horn, and glass beads. We'll make a corn husk doll, and the song for that day will be the traditional uh, Cherokee welcome song. We'll do a skit. Uh, that day's reading, we will be telling the story of James Smith, who was a road cutter. He built roads during the French and Indian War, and he was captured and adopted into a Native tribe. So we'll be telling his story that day. Tactical Thursday, uh, we will be going over, uh, we'll do our musket demo, which will include showing the kids... Uh, the different parts, how to hold it, uh, and the kids will get a chance to march around with wooden muskets and practice the musket drill. They will also be recruited into the militia. Basically, they'll get a little piece of paper that says that they are in the militia, in the militia, you know, the year and whatnot. Um, we will not be firing. Our musket. I don't think we fire it at the Joel Lane. We will fire it at our facility here. So if you come to the Camp Flintlock day camp in Four Oaks, Johnson County, we'll be shooting our musket there. But we will be doing a musket presentation at the Joel Lane house. So everybody will get to see it. They'll get to touch it. They can hold it. They can take a picture with it. And of course, this is all done under supervision. The big physical activity kind of game that we're doing for that day will be sword fighting we have foam swords and we will also be doing tug of war um crafts we have uh ship making they're going to take a cork cut it in half and make a little ship out of it with a couple of toothpicks and some scrap cloth uh, we will show them how to make a musket cartridge uh, they'll basically use um, a tube of paper, some activated charcoal, and a marble to make a fake musket cartridge. The song of the day will be Yankee Doodle, which is a song that most people have probably heard but have no idea where it came from. Um, we will be teaching them the original version of that song. And then for Friday, Falloran Friday... We have our West African style necklace, which is made out of cowrie shells. The games that we play at Nash Square will be dealer's choice on that day. Sometimes it's Friday, sometimes it's other days, but on last year's schedule we did um, the tour. So part of what we do is a tour of the house and the ground. So the staff of the Joel Lane Museum House will come out. They'll talk a bit about Joel Lane. They'll talk a little bit about his kids. And then we'll actually go into the house as well as the kitchen. And then the skit for that day, because we do a skit just about every day. The skit for that day will be whatever the kids want to do. Normally we do a skit where the kids impersonate their favorite um their favorite counselor which is usually hilarious the song for that day will be uh michael row your boat ashore and or we might do uh bow the cabbage down and those are our activities 
So everything that we do, obviously, will be done under supervision. We're not going to turn someone loose with a tomahawk and say, here you go, you just chunk it that way. Uh, we will give them instruction. And if they get it stuck, then obviously we will take pictures, of course, um, as with all the activities. So they're making quite a bit of stuff. They're making a cedar, a cedar sachet. We might also do block printing in there. I don't know. Some of the activities might change. We might add some, take a swap one out. The tomahawk throw, um, the double ball is a very active activity. The um, Native American necklace making, you know, they make something there. They get to make a, a fake cartridge. They get to make a cork ship. They get to make a West African style necklace. So they'll get to make stuff that they can take home. And then there also will be stuff that they will do like the quill ink writing, they're not really making something so much that they're they're practicing a skill. Um, with the recruitment, you know, they get their bounty, which is a little sheet of paper with their information on it, as well as pay. So they'll get a little piece of, you know, reproduction colonial money. And um, the cord making, cord making. They're going to get a jig with a number, and it's going to have their number, and they're going to be responsible for that. If they decide to keep it, at the end of the camp, it is $2. So we'll take $2 out of your $25 security deposit. Or you can just buy one out of the store. It's $2 either way. Um, or it's they're pretty easy to make if you just have um, a piece of cardboard. The biggest thing you knew, need to know is uh, it's octagon, so it's got eight sides. There are slits on each side, and there's one hole in the middle. You take a bundle of string that has seven strands. You put the, the bundle itself through the middle hole, and then you take each strand and put it to a side of the octagon. So with seven strands, it's going to leave one side open. You take the empty side, put it at 12 o'clock, count to the left, three strands, pop that strand out, put it in an empty spot, and then you rotate the jig. And you just keep doing that. It's a seven-strand braid. Um, the girls really enjoy it. The guys, mm, it's kind of hit or miss. Uh, but the girls really like it. They'll sit there and they'll just be doing it, chit-chatting. Um, it's, it's a very centering, very meditative sort of deal. And, uh, you know, boys are more tend to be more active. But some of them will, some of them will like to do it. So those are the activities, and part of that, which is not actually an activity, but is something that we do, um, we do chores. So when we're done with the activity, we clean up, we make sure that we have everything put away, and because of at the Joel Lane House, because of the limited amount of space, we have to rearrange stuff. So we have to move tables around, we have to move benches around. So we can do our skits or we can do the singing or, you know, whatever activity we happen to be doing. And then we also march to Nash Square. So uh, as part of that, normally we will play music, um, although it, we may or we may not play music. It all kind of depends on the um, kind of the current atmosphere of the area, whether, it, you know, it's conducive to uh, safety, um, so we do march down to Nash Square, we'll march there and back, play our games, and then, you know. Um, some of the activities and, uh, and demonstrations may be moved around depending on the weather. Sometimes it will rain in the afternoon. Uh, we do recommend people bring a poncho. It's a good thing to have. The staff will have a handful of just in case, um, but if it's raining, then you know we're not going to march down the Nash Square. We might be at Joe Lane the whole time. So those are activities, and uh, they're all a ton of fun. They're all hands-on. If your camper has done our field trip, uh, it's very possible that they have done some of these activities already. So. I hope to see your camper at our summer camp. I hope that when they do get here, they have a blast 
And again, if you have any questions or if there's something that you need more information on or if you're just like, hey, describe this to me in a different way, more detail, then you know, just reach out to us. We're we're very um, we're very flexible, we're very accommodating. If you need something, just let us know. And so, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed these videos. I hope they were useful. I hope they were helpful. And if you have a suggestion for other stuff, maybe edits, you know, again, just let us know. All right. So until next time, guys. Thanks for watching.